Hi everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're going to be talking about one of the most important topics in Tarkov and really in any economy based game, which is that of opportunity cost. This is a widely misunderstood concept that might change your outlook on certain aspects of the game from looting to crafting and even choice of money runs, so stick around and let's get going. Ok so before we start, in case you thought this video was going to be about making money in Tarkov specifically, the best way right now is to scav on a map with good loot, pick a decent run from one extract to the other and do it when your scav is off cooldown. I like interchange ollie and basically I use the run that I've talked about before in this video here, but you could also choose reserve or even woods these days. You rarely die as a scav anymore with scav karma, so most of the time you can run around and loot what you like. With that out of the way, let's dive into the real topic today of opportunity cost. Why is this so important? Well, I see people all the time saying things like, I never buy my GPUs because I just find them all in raid myself for free, or I like using M856A1 because I can craft it in the hideout with the items that I find in raid. In some cases these are valid, so it's not all bad, but in many cases there's some kind of logical flaw going on here, and where there's a logical flaw, it means you could be making more money doing things a little bit differently. Let's start with the graphics card situation because it's the most clear cut. As of recording, GPUs are now around 900,000 rubles, up from 600k, as this has come after the dynamic loot update. This has made GPUs harder to find, and so less are coming to market, but nothing has happened to the demand side of the equation of people looking to put them in their farm, and so the price has gone up, and this is basic economics. Now some people do say, it doesn't matter to me what the price is, because I never buy them from the fleet anyway, and as I just find mine and put them in the farm, I don't need to worry about it. Now this is valid, but there's an implicit assumption made here with this statement, and that is, specifically, hunting for GPUs, or at least the run that looks for them, is the most profitable run that you could be doing for money. This is actually less about the GPUs themselves, and more about answering the question, if you were going to do a money run, what would it be? And if the answer isn't the GPU run in a general case, then it's more efficient to do that other run, and just buy the GPUs instead of the flea market. To demonstrate the point, let's compare two hypothetical loot runs. One averages 600k rubles per run, which includes the chance to find a GPU every other raid, and another averages 700k, but it's all industrial loot like bolts, nuts and other goodies. Well, it's fairly clear when put this way, that using the ordinary run in this scenario will get you more cash overall, which means that you can then just buy a GPU every other raid instead of finding one, and have more rubles left over at the end. As I said before, if this GPU route is the most profitable, and you would run it even at 50 cards in the farm, then that's totally right to do that run. But if not, then you're cheating yourself out of some extra cash for the sake of finding the items specifically yourself. If you want to do that just because you like it, that's also okay, but it's good to bear in mind that this approach is potentially less efficient overall for your money. So this is opportunity cost in a nutshell, which in short means that we have to compare everything that we do against all the other possible choices, rather than looking at them on their own in a vacuum. The next one in the firing line is another fan favourite, which is of hideout crafts. This one is a little bit more complicated, and in short, there are two scenarios in which a craft is valid, so to speak, as the most efficient way. Firstly, if it's the most profitable craft in the module, per hour of your time overall, this is obviously the right craft to be making on its own. However, there is another scenario, where if you specifically want to use an output of a craft, say a certain ammo type, and the money that you save per hour of crafting is more than the most profitable craft, then you're better off doing that one instead. Well, at least until you have enough of the thing that you want making. This normally happens when you don't have the trader levels or the quests to unlock a purchase directly, and the flea is extortionately expensive such as M61 ammo. But what I have seen many people doing is crafting things that look cheaper, but actually aren't in general because of forgoing the opportunity in that module to make something else instead. A great example of this is 762 BP ammo. The craft uses two green powders and one blue powder to make 200 BP rounds. Green eagle powder is about 50k, so for 100,000 for the two. Blue is around 15,000, so 115k total for the craft. This makes it 575 rubles for 200 rounds. Pretty nice, right? Prapple sells the stuff for 985 rubles, and on the flea it can be a bit cheaper sometimes, but let's just use the trader figure for comparison as it's more generous. So using these figures, this saves 410 rubles per round, which equates to 82,000 rubles, which is decent. However, the default time for the craft takes 8 hours and 35 minutes. In this example, we're not going to take into account crafting levels or anything like that here because they all scale at the same rate as the improvements are percentage based, so shouldn't matter for this comparison. This puts our savings at 9,550 rubles per hour if we're going to use the BP ourselves, and a little less if we're to sell it due to the flea market fees. However, using two M67 grenades and one RGD smoke, you can craft a green powder instead in the same module. 
Once you can buy the M67s from Peacekeeper, this costs $79 times 2 for $158 or 19,750 rubles, plus the 4,745 rubles from Prapple for the smoke grenade for just under 24,500 rubles overall. As we've seen, green powder sells for around 50,000, and with 3k removed for fees, this comes to a total profit of 22,500 rubles for the craft. This craft though only takes 1 hour and 38 minutes, which makes 13,800 rubles per hour. From this, we can see that we're actually better off doing the green powder crafts and buying BP ammo from Prapor himself. The main situation where this is different is when you're logging out for the evening and the time doesn't even matter anymore because all the crafts are shorter than the time that you'll be away. In that case, you want to just look at the total profit, in which case BP is better for overnight crafting. Moving on, craft stacking is another very common misconception. We'll continue with the green powder and BP because it's a great example, but this is seen in a few places. So firstly, you can make blue gunpowder with 70 PS rounds, which costs you 6,500 rubles, and then the two greens as we looked at before for 49,000 together for a total of 55,500. We save on the flea market fees by not selling these intermediary items, and we make some BP, which comes to 278 rubles per round. Now that's insane value, right? Well, although the cash outlay is low, inevitably one of these crafts is better than the others. With a base time of 1 hour and 29 minutes, the blue gunpowder craft, while still making money, is inefficient on time because it only costs around 15k to buy, so only makes 5,600 rubles per hour. The problem is, is you're only able to do one craft within the module at any one time, so in picking one craft, you're not doing another. We already discussed the other two crafts and know that green powder makes more money, so crafting green over and over again is the sensible thing to do unless of course you're logging off and then buying blue from the flea and making BP is better like we discussed before. The only case really where stacking crafts makes sense is when the different stages of the craft are all similar in terms of value and you save the market fees by transforming stage 1 into stage 2 for higher value before selling. This is also assuming that you can't buy low sell high on the ingredients. For example, if you can sell the green powder for 52,000 rubles and buy it at night for 48,000 when people are lowballing it, this is larger than the 3,000 fee that you pay to sell the green in the first place and means you should actually look to sell the find and raid green powder and then buy back non find and raid powder off the flea from other players when they put it too low on the marketplace so that you can use it in your BP crafting. It's not always easy to take advantage of these market fluctuations, but if you pay attention to the marketplace and you log on at the right time and you see that items are cheap, then you can pick them up and you can use them later in your crafts. Finally, let's talk about finding items in Raid, the flea market, and whether you should sell or keep these items. If you find an item that is find in Raid and bring it back to your stash, it's worth whatever you can sell it for on the flea. Let's take a piece of armour as an example. If you find a slick on a boss guard and you get it back to your stash, it's worth whatever it's going for on the flea market if you sold it. This means that if you wouldn't buy one at that price yourself from the flea, you really should just sell it. It's no different that you have it in your stash with a find and raid tag on it versus being available on the flea at that price. Find and raid items and cash should be thought of as interchangeable, so if you do decide to run it, you're forgoing what you could have gotten from another player in the sale on the market. Clearly, if the armour isn't find in raid, then this is a different question entirely, because the choices are different, either to sell to the traders at a huge markdown or use it yourself. However, the same logic still applies. Would you buy the armour if it was available at the price the traders will pay for it? If yes, then don't sell it and use it yourself. If no, then you probably should just sell it to the trader. Ultimately, there's nothing wrong with using these free kits in inverted commas, but it should be appreciated that it's not fully logical to decide to use or not use these items based on whether they're on the flea or in your stash. If you want to purely for fun, then be my guest and don't let anyone stop you. But you will make more money overall if you have consistent logic in what you run and what you don't. If you learned something or enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel, please, as always, consider sending a like and a comment as it helps with visibility for those who haven't found me yet on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch to check out when I'm live, which is currently two times a week, once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the real-time recording of the Scav Talk podcast, which you can check out the link to in the description below, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time in the afternoon. And with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.